The world is a strange place. There are places filled with natural beauty where people can relax and unwind, enjoying the wonders of nature and indulging in healthy activities. And there are places where the ruggedness of Mother Nature can pose a danger to everyday life. One of these places is called a Tuller Village, but is more popularly known as Cliff Village to the outside world. It is located in Liangshan in the Sichuan province of China. The entire village is located at a mountain pass at a height of 1400 to 1600 meters. It is inhabited by 72 families. Due to the dangerous terrain, many consider this village as the most dangerous place to live in China. A Brief History The village was first inhabited nearly 200 years ago as a safe haven from bandits and war that raged in the central plains of China at that time. The local soil being fertile, the villagers settled here safe from the difficulties they faced in the outside world. Location and Topography The village is located on the slope of the Maigu River Grand Canyon. The location is like a step in the middle of three steps located in a mountain depression. It is a rugged landscape with difficult terrain. For a trip up and down the village to the town at the bottom, you have to walk for an hour, traverse the perpendicular rattan bridges, and then climb down the almost 70 to 90 degree pathway straight down to the bottom. Tourists who come to see this village are taken aback by the sight and almost immediately abandon all plans of traveling to the top. They have to admire the strength and courage of the villagers who are still staying here despite all the difficulties of daily existence. Distance. Why would people want to live on a cliff? Clearly, it takes all sorts to make a world. Some people simply like the peace and tranquility of being far away from the hustle and bustle of the world. Others could be aboriginal or traditional settlers who choose to live on a cliff for religious or cultural reasons. It is seen that the Alangshan Yi Autonomous Prefecture is home to the largest population of Yi people. They number around 9 million people and live mainly in rural areas of Sichuan, Guangxi, Guazhou, and Yunnan provinces. Nearly all of them live in mountainous areas, preferring to reside on steep mountain slopes far from the cities. Reaching the Outside World the villagers have to move a distance of nearly 1,000 meters from the top of the mountain to the bottom. They have to climb a cliff drop of 800 meters using 13 intermittent steps of the 218 steps of a steel ladder. But before reaching this point, the villagers have to climb 17 intermittent rattan ladders along the cliff. Two of these rattan ladders are perpendicular to the village and are 100 meters long, but it is the spaces in the cliffs between the rattan ladders that are the most dangerous. Over the years, a number of villagers, some say at least 100, have lost their lives negotiating this precarious daily journey. Daily life in a Tuller village Life is tough in China's Tuller village. Even though the village has been connected with running water, stable electricity, and internet, mobile, and TV towers, it is still a challenge for locals to travel up and down the mountain. If you are between 6 and 15 years of age, you would probably be attending school on most weekdays. This means that you would be accompanied by your parents, especially if you are a young kid. A trip can take two hours one way, depending on the speed of travel. If you are an adult, cattle rearing and farming would be your preferred choice of occupation. Included among these are goats and sheep. Raising pigs is also popular because they are a source of ham, pork, and bacon. Farming Farming seems to be the main occupation for these cliff dwellers. The mountain topography is usually amenable to a small range of crops, such as rice, wheat, corn, soybean, and potatoes. Vegetables and fruits like oranges and olives are grown in these areas. Tea is consumed here on a daily basis. Navel oranges are a popular fruit here and are grown during the winter months. They grow easily and their trees trees do not require much maintenance. They have a combination of sweet and sour taste. The trees have a height of 6 to 8 feet. They are known to be seedless and have a nice orange color. Tending to goats, chickens, and sheep. Goats are among the best animals to rear in this remote region. Goats are preferred because they are hardy and can survive on pastures that other animals would decline to eat. Goats can also be reared in a small area that does not require a lot of resources to manage. Goats also provide milk, butter, and cheese for the villagers. Traveling to school. The distance from the top of the cliff to the primary school at the bottom is around 1,000 meters. To reach the school, the parents and children have to climb down 13 steps of the 218 steps of a steel ladder. The small size of the village makes it impractical for a school to be constructed there. The students are accompanied and protected by their parents, who encourage laggard children to move with the team and decide when and where to rest. As some sections of the path are less than 0.5 meters wide, the children have to walk in a single file to get there. Earlier, the children had to trek on a rugged mountain landscape and use wooden ladders to climb up and down the cliff. Now, the government has installed concrete and steel steps to make it easier to go to and come back from school. You would have to praise these children for their courage and resilience to make the trip every school morning. On one side of the path are cliffs, and on the other side are abysses. Children between the ages of 6 and 15 years go to the Lear School at the foot of the mountain here. The steps were carefully designed by the villagers themselves. 
keeping in mind the reach of the children. The children have to walk for one hour and deal with the dangerous terrain to get there. They have to do all this with books and homework in their backpacks, which, as you can imagine, is quite difficult to manage. Commercial Exchange The climb down this path becomes necessary because the villagers have to exchange the vegetables and pork grown in this village for some other commodities of daily life that are only available outside the village. Owing to the dangerous cliff paths, some people have never left the village in their lives. There are various kiosks that are located at the bottom of the cliff, and many younger people climb up and down the steel steps to buy and sell goods like tea and other items. You have to carry all the goods in a backpack type container while traveling up and down the cliff. Just climbing up and down the mountainous path could take up to four hours. Difficulties in commerce The mountainous path takes four hours to climb for a round trip. Since the journey can be treacherous, it is left up to the youth to make this journey on a daily basis. I guess once a day is more than enough since it can take a lot out of anyone. Since the local government has invested in infrastructure and the village youngsters are equipped with 4G mobile technology and access to the internet. They have made efforts to advertise the local produce to the neighboring localities so that business can be initiated. Mostly, young people travel down to trade locally produced commodities in the nearby town at the base of the cliff. Taking anything up to the village requires a lot of ingenuity and patience. You may have to battle inclement weather like rain and snow. The steel steps can become slippery in winter. Can you imagine carrying an air conditioner or a washing machine up or down the cliff for installation or repairs? To me, it is simply mind-boggling even to think of it. Common Sources of Income There are limited sources of income for people who live in such a rugged landscape. The mountainous terrain is home to a range of crops from corn to maize, rice, potatoes, and soybeans. Growing and Selling Peppers Growing peppers is a good source of income for the villagers. They can be grown within 60 to 90 days, but it depends on the variety of the plants being cultivated. Peppers can be taken out by hand when ready for harvesting. Harvesting can be done with a knife, so it is easily accomplished. It is better to rotate the plant with legumes, cabbage, or corn to prevent soil depletion and allow for plant rotation. The best thing about pepper cultivation is that peppers do not have strict soil requirements. They can grow in a variety of soils. The soils should be aerated and drained on a regular basis. It is best to prepare the soil beforehand by removing weeds, rocks, and other undesirable elements from the soil. Peppers are self-pollinated plants, which means that the villagers do not have to use insects to boost plant pollination. The use of insects could speed up the growing process. It is preferred to weed out the plants on a regular basis if you want the best yield. Growing corn Growing corn on the cliffs can be a challenge. It needs a lot of space. Corn takes up nutrition from the soil and is pollinated by wind. Corn should be grown in short rows of 7 to 8 plants per row. It needs a sunny spot that gets full sun and has fertile, well-drained soil. Plants should be spaced 8 to 12 inches apart. You have to fertilize it regularly. Normal plants grow fast with dark green healthy leaves. If the leaves turn light green, it is time to fertilize again. It needs a lot of water to grow properly. It has shallow roots and is susceptible to drought. Different types of corn should not be allowed to cross-pollinate. It is also important to make arrangements to keep away raccoons because they love corn. Farmers can fence them out with two strands of electric wire 4 and 12 inches from the ground. Some farmers throw blackbird netting over the plants because raccoons don't like it. Most corn plants will yield two ears per stalk. To determine whether an ear is ready for harvest, you have to look at the silks. They should be brown and dry with just a little fresh green at the base. Squeeze the husk to see if the ear inside feels plump, not skinny. If you're still not sure if the ear seems ripe, check by peeling just enough of the husk back to expose a couple of inches of the ear. Poke a kernel with your finger. The corn is ready to pick if it bleeds a light, milky sap like skim milk. If the liquid is clear, the ear is not ready. Ears that are too ripe will look too milky, like cream versus skim milk. They often taste starchy. Remove them right away. Perfectly ripened ears also taste sugary sweet when sampled raw. When possible, harvest sweet corn in the morning when the ears are cool. To remove the ear, use one hand to hold the corn stalk and the other to pull the ear down and away from the stalk, twisting a little until it breaks off. Olive Trees Olive trees are another plant that is grown in this region. They thrive where the summers are long, hot, and dry, and the winters are cool and not so dry. They can tolerate salty coastal locations. They may require cross-pollination in order to grow faster. Dry air is preferred for growth. Olives are generally grown in a Mediterranean climate, but they can be adapted to mountainous conditions as well. It is best to plant olive trees 15 to 20 feet apart. They can grow up to 20 feet tall and 15 feet wide, so planting should allow for this. Smoked bacon Smoked bacon produced by the people of a Tuller village is one of the local specialties. It can be smoked for a period varying from a couple of hours to a week or even 10 days to a month. It is usually placed in a large container and covered 
covered for the desired period and later air dried to get the best results taste wise. It is typically smoked till it is golden brown in color. It can also be turned into sausage strings, which can be consumed as and when wanted. Raising Goats Raising goats is one of the main sources of income. The villagers grow prickly ash and olives and use them as feed. Shaking down olives from a tree can be challenging. You have to climb the tree, shake down the olives, and climb down the cliff path to gather them in a basket. Transporting goats down the mountain is difficult because you have to strap everything to your back and use a basket or container. Raising Chicken and Sheep Raising chickens and sheep is also practiced here. This is because they can easily survive in this mountainous rural habitat and live off the growth of grass on the slopes. Chicken feed is easily available and sheep have ample opportunities to eat the grass in the fields or that which is given to them by shepherds. Hens produce eggs and meat for the villagers to eat. Sheep and goats can be herded in flocks. They can also provide meat as a means of sustenance as well as to be a source of wool for winter clothing. If you visit here, you can often find your pathway blocked by a goat or sheep that has strayed or is just exploring the terrain for something to eat. The first daughter-in-law of a university student who married into this village had to climb steel steps for six hours every time she traveled in and out of the village. Really, this must be so exhausting for everyone. In the past, children had to climb down rattan ladders in order to go to school. Climbing down is even more dangerous than climbing up, and it gets even more dangerous in winter. Embracing Technology The local government has encouraged the villagers to embrace technology and agriculture as a way for daily living. Naval orange, olive, and green pepper are grown according to local conditions and sold outside. Young people are using the internet and mobile phones to advertise the agricultural produce of Cliff Village. 4G mobile and TV relay stations have been set up for the benefit of the residents. There is running water, stable electricity, mobile signals, and broadband. The government has invested a lot of money in developing the infrastructure and technology to connect Cliff Village with the outside world. Latest Developments The Chinese government invested a lot of money into the development of this Cliff Village. The wooden rattan steps and ropes have, in many places, been replaced by steel and concrete steps etched out or fitted into the A's as you can imagine. Many former inhabitants of this Cliff Village have left the place for other locales. The families that still choose to live here are used to the lifestyle and hardships and still regard it as their home. According to a report by CNN in 2020, many of the villagers were relocated to apartment blocks in the center of Xiaozhou City, ending their difficulties in climbing the steel structures and rattan steps that used to be part of their daily lives. The new apartments have been equipped with modern kitchens, toilets, water, gas, and electricity. The villagers that moved greatly appreciated the initiative of the Chinese government, saying that it would make life more convenient for their families. They would have better access to commerce and medical facilities which would greatly simplify their lives. Their children would have better access to education and they could also explore jobs in more diverse fields. Amazingly, despite the lure of an easier life and more conveniences, about 30 families have still chosen to stay. One possible reason for this is that some people feel rooted in the place they grew up in and develop a love and nostalgia for the land of their youth. Others may be at a stage in their lives where they find it difficult to make a change. Surge in popularity slash tourist destination. The popularity of this village surged after people posted pictures of children ascending sky ladders on the internet. Though it is officially known as a tuler, people had renamed it Cliff Village due to the sheer cliff that had to be climbed to ascend and descend the village. Increased interest and awe into what it must have felt to be an inhabitant of this village prompted visitors to raise an amount of nearly 1 million yuan for the village residents. It was even reported by the state-run news site Paper.cn that possibly a cable car service will be launched to take tourists up and down the cliff, though these plans remain in the works. Conclusion We have reviewed the life of people living in a Tuler village or Cliff Village as it is more popularly known in Liangshan in the Sichuan province of China. The city was inhabited around 200 years ago by the Yi people, who prefer to live on steep mountains far away from cities for cultural reasons. After looking at the hardships that they have to endure, it is not surprising that many of them have made a move to the city. Actually, this is part of the Chinese government's plan to reduce poverty by relocating people who live in remote areas to locations that are more economically developed. That said, the curiosity and popularity of the village and its dwellers remain a talking point on the internet in the current times.